first of all, thank you, Open LifeSci, for inviting me to share what we do. I consider um, our work is super complementary, and I'm really impressed with the results of the program. Uh, about myself, I'm Julieta Arancio. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'm currently living in Switzerland. I'm finishing my PhD on open science hardware and its contribution to democratizing knowledge production in the global south. And as most people in open science, I have many hats. So I'm also uh, co-organizing the Latin American um, community of open science hardware. And I have co-founded with Alex Cuchera and, Andre and Andres Chagas a program that is a sibling of Open LifeSci. It's called Open Hardware Makers, where we give um, support to new open hardware projects. So, but wh what is open science hardware? <laughs> what is it all about? Okay, so it basically goes down to this. Um, people who want to make science need tools to make science. And nowadays, those tools are what we call a black box. And they are black box because we just input samples for information or some kind of input, and we get an output out of them, but we are not 100% sure of the processes that produce these outputs. Of course, we know about the principles, but we cannot inspect tools. And the fact that we cannot do so brings many problems to researchers in general. First of all, this, as we don't know how they work, these tools are very difficult to modify and customize. And um, I don't know if you are aware, but scientists are, have been studied to be one of the groups that customize their tools the most, which makes sense, right? Because you're always trying to uh, pursue new questions and to see a bit more. So you need your tools to be able to change with your ideas. Second, uh, being proprietary, these are hard to maintain. So we have a uh, horrible example, unfortunately, with the COVID crisis in, in the US where some hospitals um, didn't want to repair ventilators, afraid of breaking patent laws. Another example, another problem of this is that science tools are usually produced by a small number of companies and these are therefore able to set in general very expensive prices. So many universities around the world cannot access to equipment. So as you can see, uh, these are consequence that, consequences that are faced by almost everyone in academia, but the impact is certainly bigger in those countries that have lower investment in science and technology. On one side, because science tools are more expensive in the global south, but also when science equipment breaks down, let's say in the UK, it's a very different experience as what it does in Ecuador, Cameroon, Argentina. So why? Because you depend on the supplier who charges you a lot for sending a specialist professionals or replacement parts. This generates huge delays in the case that is possible. And you also have the restriction of imports and exports, which makes it very difficult to access. So all this very practical stuff translates into questions that are not pursued, translates into limitations for, for research and less power for the essays. And at the end of the day, less diversity of perspectives in science. And the main idea or the main takeaway here is that we are reinforcing the pattern where most science is produced by those who have already money to produce it. So some people started thinking about why not opening the designs of science tools and some uh, changes in access to hardware design during the last 10 years makes us think that it's possible. So for example, the availability of software, free open source software for designing and testing hardware, the rise of 3D printing, uh, ideal for prototyping and for low volume distributed production, the access to cheaper electronic components and projects like Arduino that democratize electronic design, the massification of the internet as a way to share experiences and learn from each other, and the work of an amazing community that's been doing a lot for improving um, the ways in which hardware designs are shared. The good thing is that um, it's been a while and the results are showing. So here I'm just, um, I will just show three very good examples of open science hardware in action. Uh, but there are many, many others inside and outside academia. And the good thing is that because they're open, they can learn from each other. So on the left, 
in Tanzania, Open Flexure is a project that has enabled uh, short circuit production of microscopes that are being used in education, research, and clinical diagnosis of malaria. Open Flexure is a UK project uh, originally, but they are producing now microscopes at a local makerspace, and this can be easily sourced, repaired, without dealing with imports and huge costs and delays. Another example, Audiomoth, is a success in conservation biology. You can imagine it as a very big ear that logs sound all around it. It has a very big community of users improving and customizing it, and it's leading to developing new methods to address research questions that before were considered untestable. Uh, finally, uh, here in, in Peru, epidemiology researchers have designed and built an, an open source device to track malaria spread in Amazonian indigenous populations, and, and they were able to do so in a way that respects the preferences of these populations and that tolerates also the very difficult conditions, weather conditions of the Amazon. It's so uh, it's it, it's such a, a growth in open science hardware that we also see, for example, uh, policies, national policies, rec policy recommendations for Finland, which are suggesting uh, the country to adopt an open science hardware strategy at a national level. So that was th this year, 2020. So just to sum up, open science hardware is any piece of hardware that is used for scientific investigations and that anyone can obtain, assemble, use, study, modify, share, and sell. Because you can build, of course, hardware, but you may also want to just buy it and make sure that you can modify it or do anything you want with it later. The word hardware in some languages uh, may bias us towards electronics, but um, open hardware, open science hardware refers also, besides standard lab equipment, to auxiliary materials, sensors, biological uh, regions, analog and digital, digital electronics, and also mechanical tools. And this huge circle in the middle reminds us that the heart of open science hardware is good documentation. So user guides, but also contribution, contribution guides, sharing files in edit, editable formats, many other good practices that the community has defined to ensure that everyone has access to your hardware design with the idea of improving projects instead of constantly reinventing the wheel. So one of the main ideas here for the from the community is that if we really want open science to be transformative, we cannot limit open science practice to open data and open access to publications. That's a minimum threshold. But if we really want to open science to other actors inside and outside academia, we need to be able to share the tools we use to work. And this, as I mentioned, has benefits in terms of efficiency and, of course, reproducibility in science, but also in opening who is able to produce scientific knowledge and whose questions matter. So um, there you see the logo in the bottom. Gosh, community is the community gathering people pushing for open science hardware to be ubiquitous by 2025. And I really invite you to check the manifesto, sign it if you agree with our values. Finally, how can you get involved? How can you participate? Okay, so the entry point I would say is the GOSH forum. You see the URL there. Uh, you can drop a question. People are super friendly. You can search for the regional communities in the forum and connect to the people that are near you. You can also use uh, the Open Know How project, which was a findability protocol that was established for open hardware in general, not only for science, because you will see that open hardware projects are in many different platforms. Some of them are in GitHub, GitLab, uh, Wikifactory, Instructables, uh, Hackaday. There are many platforms, but Open Know How is a, a, a protocol that unifies findability, whatever platform your project is in. Um, you can search for keywords there. You can also read or submit a design to the Journal of Open Hardware. The cool stuff is that your documentation will also be peer reviewed, which is super interesting. And you can follow Open Hardware Makers in Twitter, where we will announce our next cohort after uh, this year, where we run a super big community and expert consultation uh, to improve our curriculum and program. So that's all thank you so much for listening uh, those are the ways you can contact me and feel free to ask me any questions thank you oops so that was huli um huli is on the slack uh, so you can ask questions there we have also left uh sorry
yeah tiny glitch there uh, so that was it for uh, for today before we close out we uh, want you to know that we also have um, homework for today so let me find the hackmd just so you know the homework uh, frequency is reducing now uh, what you have done in the past uh, which which was about creating readme file starting your contribution file starting your code of conduct and road mapping these are something that you will continue to advance so it's not that the week have uh, week, weeks are over where you are going to work on this so please uh, continue working on those aspects uh, in the next week, please uh, start to share your project online. Uh, we have demonstrated Git pages. You can also use Google site, which could be simpler for a lot of people who don't want to use GitHub. We also can use WordPress free or other any um, platform. Um, if you want to just strictly be on GitHub, that's also fine, but please uh, have a detailed readme. Please choose a license, uh, start working on your code of conduct create a project development plan. We have created a small assignment that can help you use agile method uh, the, that is linked in the line number 466. Mm -hmm. And after these assignments, think about uh, putting your roadmap up. Uh, but this is something that we will also talk about in next week, mostly because we will talk about science dissemination. So our project is not just about developing, but sharing as well. So this is something we want to start working on in the next week onward. Uh, with that, we are done on time. That's amazing. Uh, any questions that you have, we can take it in the last one minute, but I'll stop recording. Thank you for joining today. Thanks, Malvika. Um,